The problem reads, determine the change in altitude required for a 15% reduction in air density, assuming an isothermal atmosphere at 20 degrees Celsius. Now we can clearly see that there's not a lot of information here. So let's write down what we have and what we want. We want a change in altitude. So we're going to have a change in altitude. So we're looking for Z2 minus Z1 because we measured altitude in, with Z. So this is what we're looking for. We want a 15% reduction in air density. So that means that row two has to equal 85% of the original. So 0 0.85 is row one. So that's this part here. And we have air, so let's write that down. That's our gas. And we have T1 equals T2 equals 20 degrees Celsius. So this is our information. What is our system? So what do we have? We have a static vertical system. So that means our only force is gravity. So that means that P equals P of Z. And so we can conclude that the partial derivatives with respect to Z are actual derivatives with respect to Z. And we have minus rho G. So this is our starting point here. Notice that the fluid is air, which is compressible. So that means that that rho is a function of z. So we're going to have to somehow get rho instead of dp, we're going to need d rho. So that we need d rho here instead of deep. So we need something that relates p and rho. Let's assume although it's not said that our air is acting as an ideal gas. So we have the ideal gas law that says P times V equals NRT. And we have T as a constant here, okay? We also know that rho equals N times the molar mass. We can find the molar mass of air over V. So we, we can get rid of V, which also changes. So if we put these two together, what do we get? We get P equals NRT over V. And we'll write that as NM over V. And then we've multiplied by M, so we need to divide by M. RT over M. And this is rho. So we'll write first the RT over M part times rho. So notice that this is a function, p is now a function of rho. The critical part is that all of these are constants with respect to z. These are constants. And that means when we take the derivative, dp dz, we will simply have rt over m d rho dz. So this fact here implies that Taking the derivative of both sides with respect to z, dp to z is equal to rho t over m d rho dz. Now, this is critical that many times t depends on z, but in our case, we were given that we have an isothermal atmosphere so that t is not dependent on z and we just have d rho dz. So now we have a way to get rid of P. dp dz equals this, dp dz equals that, and we can make that into an ordinary differential equation and integrate. That's the key here. So let's draw a line. Let's write this side first. You'll see why. So we have RT over M d rho dz equals minus rho g. And it just makes it easier if dz goes on that side. So organizing properly, and you can do the organizing at the end, we would have minus r t over m g. We checked that none of these are dependent on z, right? And we can actually find all of them, the molar mass of air we can find. 
and R and T and G we know. So we now have D rho divided by rho equals DZ. Now notice I've left space for the integrals. So this is from row one to row two, and this is from Z1 to Z2. That's an ordinary differential equation. We have minus R T M G. We have D rho over rho, so that's um, ln of rho. So that's ln of rho two over rho one, so that would be rho two divided by rho one inside here equals Z2 minus Z1, which is what we want. So Z2 minus Z1, which is what we're looking for, is equal to minus 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin times T, but in Kelvin, so 293 Kelvin M is 28.97 kilograms versus kilomoles, so we'll just write 10 to the third moles. This is a table value, you look it up, times 9.81 meters per second squared, times ln, and row two over row one is simply 0 0.85. Now, of course, we expect this to be positive, so in order to get rid of that minus, we're hoping that this is minus, which it is. But let's check all of our units. We have moles canceled with moles, Kelvin with Kelvin. And so we're left here with joules versus kilogram meters per second squared. This is the big one. And joules is equal to kilogram meter squared over second squared, so we need another meter here. Then the joules will cancel, and we're left with meters as we should be. So let's get our calculator out and calculate. So we have minus 8.3145 times 293 times ln of 0.85. And now we're dividing by all of this, so we're going to use a parenthesis, 28.97 divided by 10 to the third times 9.81, parenthesis, enter. So 1,393 meters, 1,393. So our answer is Z2 minus Z1 equals 139 three meters.